Hello everyone and welcome to part 4 of this character creation series where we're making Reg from Made in Abyss. So uh, yeah, let's continue on our journey here. Um, at the moment, we just continue with the same task that we already did. I just want to start to focus on the arms now. And uh, you can see here that the arms have a little bit of a pose. You can see how the way I drew it, they're slightly tilted forward. And the pose that I want to make also should have that a little bit. That is for rigging reasons and also just because it looks more natural. But uh, it's a bit difficult to model from this, um, as you can imagine, uh, since it has a little bit of a, you know, an angle to it. So I also made a little drawing on the side of just the arm uh, without any, any rotation. So we can use this one as well. Uh, let's start by adding a new mesh with shift a uh, add mesh circle I will go here into these settings and I'll set the vertex count here to uh, 8 so hit enter and you'll find at the 3d cursor your new geometry um, now remember that you can always reset the position of an object so if you move it away uh, in object mode you can always hit Alt G and the origin, so this point, this point here will be moved back to the origin of your world. So I'll just move it over here and I don't have to worry too much about you know lining it up with the grid or anything. Just move it to here and now enter edit mode. Uh, I'll scale it down. You see this ring, uh, that means that proportional editing is still on from our last part. I'll disable that, scale it down a bit more to make it fit, and just you know create the arm. Uh, this is going to be a straight tube in this style. There's very little detail here apart from the rings. Um, we can actually go ahead and add these rings. Let's see, we have roughly four. Hit Control R and then use the scroll wheel to add a few cuts. And yeah, we'll just go for four cuts along this distance. And just click to confirm. Now, uh, you see this here is going to be a cylinder, actually, from the side view. Uh, maybe let's bring up our references quickly. You see that this here is a cylinder that kind of punches through like this. Um, so what I'll do is select the lowest ring by, uh, by holding the Alt key and clicking on this edge. That will select the entire ring, hit Shift D, and then hit the right mouse button to leave the new copy at its original position. So this is a copy. Be sure to remember that because you don't want to have uh, like extra copies of your mesh in the same place without noticing it. <clears throat> I can now hit the R key to rotate this and hold control to snap it to 90 degrees. Uh, then I move it a little bit down just to get to the center of this new, um, new cylinder. And then I'll move it, uh, I'll use E, the E key to extrude. Uh, I'll hold middle mouse for a bit or click middle mouse to snap it to the X axis. And then uh, let's hold the control key to go by increments. And you can see here in the top of the screen, so it's a bit hard to point it, but here are the coordinates uh, or like how much you're moving it. I look up here and I see that I need to move it by about 0.1. So I'll do this, then I'll select the other side here and I'll hit G, snap again to the axis and move it by the same amount, that way it's symmetrical. So uh, you'll realize that we have a little bit of a gap here, so we can also, uh, maybe let's go ahead and um, select these rings, hit X and hit the edge loop option this time to remove these uh, edges quickly. I maybe should have added them a bit later. I'll just drag this cylinder down uh, to here and then use Ctrl R again to add my loops back in uh, so that they're evenly spaced once again. Uh, so it's rough, you know, this is not perfect, but it's just a, um, yeah, a way for us to get started. So let's also select this ring here, Alt, Alt click on the ring, hit F to fiddle this side. Uh, Alt click on the ring, hit F to fill this side. Now you'll see that this is not quads anymore, this is an n-gon as we call it, so a face with more than four uh, vertices, but that's okay. 
this is of course not going to be in our final version of this mesh but it's again a starting point now for this cylinder here let's uh, hover your mouse over this upper part of your mesh and then hit L with L you can select all the linked or uh, connected points I'll now use shift D to copy and quickly click middle mouse to snap it to the that axis and then I'll leave it somewhere here I'll scale it up a little bit and then it will have roughly the right height but not the right thickness yet so if you just hit S it will scale it along all axes if you had uh, hit S and then X for example it will be constrained to one axis but you can hit also uh, hit also S and then shift Z to uh, constrain it to all the axes apart from the Z axis so that's what I'm going to do here to increase the thickness without increasing the height. Now with Alt and Alt Shift, I'll select all these rings, hit S and Shift C again to increase the thickness further on these parts here. And then um, for this part, uh, basically, let's see. Um, What's a good topology for that? Let's see, okay, I'll select this lower ring, make a copy, bring it down a little bit, scale it a little bit down, then make another copy of this. Uh, rotate it a little bit. Okay, I'm going a bit experimental here, but yeah, rotate it a little bit. Then hit S to scale, and then hit Z to constrain it along its z-axis, and then stretch it out like this. You also need to move it a bit to the front, and maybe scale it a bit along the x-axis until you find this line uh, but never scale it along uh, y so avoid this so now we have this stretched out circle and this beginning circle now you can select them both hit F3 and search for bridge uh, bridge edge loops uh, apparently you can also hit Control e and go to uh, bridge edge loops and um, that connects them like this and we can use Control R to add a loop cut in between here and we want to scale it from this point so you can do it uh, yeah like rough in a rough way or you can what you can do as well is select these two points uh, or I guess it's just one point here hit shift s for snapping options and hit cursor to select it. That brings the 3D cursor to here. Now you can select the ring, hit the period key, and change from medium point to 3D cursor. Now all your transformations will be centered around, or the origin of it, or the pivot, or whatever, will be at the 3D cursor. Now we can again uh, use scale and use shift C maybe, to just give it a little bit of this curvature without changing this part too much. Now just to reset our settings at this point, uh, hit shift, shift C to reset the position of the 3D cursor, hit period and change back to median point. So that looks good I believe uh, for what we want at the moment. Let's just select this again and uh, hit F to close the hole. You don't need to always do this, I mean will later have to review all these parts either way but yeah if you want you can just fill a couple of these holes just select them alt click on the edge and hit F to fill now this is the arm ready now um, we can actually save this copy here on the site maybe it will be useful for later so uh, let me duplicate it with shift D then uh, here it's still selected I'll go for, I don't know, arm straight or I don't know, uh, neutral and we'll leave it here, just check the eye icon here so it's it's hidden now. So there is now, even if we change this and do something with it, we still have a copy of it um, hidden. Uh, because now I want to bring this and implement it into the body and the first thing I want to do is um, since it's still lined up nicely with the axis I'll select these lower two parts by hovering over them and using the 
L shortcut to select the linked items. Uh, actually, before that, maybe sorry, unselect it all with Alt A, select only the cylinder and move the cursor to select it one more time. Uh, we have to do the same settings again, you know, hit the Here key, go to 3D cursor. Now deselect, select the slower points, and if you rotate them now, you'll see that they rotate around uh, the cylinder. So I want to give it a little bit of a, you know, 15 degrees or so, maybe 10 degrees, 15, 15 seems fine. Yeah, a bit of, a, of an angle to make it look nice. And we'll just, you know, go back to medium point as our pivot and reset the 3D cursor with Shift C. Now in object mode, uh, go ahead and just bring it into, into the right place, something like here. We can also just do some rough edits, just scale it up a little bit, doesn't matter too much. Um, so we can, of course, at this point also judge a little bit. Uh, it doesn't need to be all accurate in modeling, right? Uh, the character design is a bit organic, so I don't mind going in here and scaling up some parts to just line it up a little bit nicer with our reference. So this seems to be closer to what we actually should have drawn, and my sketch on the side maybe wasn't the most accurate. Alright, now that we have that, um, you see the object is scaled, rotated, and has weird transformation, but it doesn't matter, we just will join all of this into our body so that basically all transformation will be lost and this this mesh the content of it will become part of this mesh so let's select this one first uh, then shift click on the body and then hit ctrl j to join you'll see that that also mirrored it on the other side because this object has the mirror modifier on it and the arm is added on the right side of course so that just nicely mirrors it it's now part of this mesh uh, by the way we didn't really check the depth of it uh, so let's select all these points again. Let's just make sure that they're where the arm should be. Maybe I drew this a little bit too far in the back. So I'll bring it a bit further to the front than that. But yeah, that leaves us with something like this. Now, should I try to add the arm <laughs> and join all these things together in this part? <clears throat> um, we can try. So uh, you see we have eight points here. So that means we need eight points here to join it nicely together. Uh, you get nicely eight points if you count here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we want something like this. But this would be a little bit too big of a, an area. So I'll add a loop cut here, bring it to roughly the right place. We can move this one down instead, select it and hit G twice to slide along the edge. I'll bring this up a little bit to yeah, just center it a little bit better. And I don't really like that we're so close to the back here, so I'll try to instead um, bring this region. Let's select all these points here. I'll hit O to enable proportional editing, and I'll try to bring these a bit more to the top. I'll also change the curve to sharp and scale it up a little bit, and just try to line it up a little bit better with the arm here. Oh, and I don't want to edit the arm itself, so I'll go in here into the options and check connected only, so that these unconnected parts aren't moved. Make it smooth a little bit. Uh, hit O again to disable this option. And now we can hopefully just delete this vertex and select these two edges. Hit Ctrl E and bridge edge loops. Uh, you can also add some cuts here and hopefully you can adjust the smoothness a little bit. That could give you a good starting point. So let's leave it like this and before we end this part, let's quickly just go in here and uh, freehand adjust some of these points to make them a bit smoother. You might have to drag out a few of these points here to align the arm better with the back. Just, you know, rotate the camera around a little bit. And we'll do something similar with the front. Now don't do it too much, it doesn't need to be perfectly smooth. And I also see a little bit of a, like a thing that we can improve here. So 
select these three points here. I, I just want to improve the topology a little bit. Uh, then delete these three, four faces. And next, um, let's see. I'll also delete this edge here and this edge here. Uh, I hope by now you know how to do it. Just select it and hit X and then use the delete, delete edge loops here. And hopefully you can see at this point what I'm trying to do. I'm just fixing up the, the topology here a little bit. So select these two points now, hit F to connect them, right click and hit subdivide to subdivide them, bring this point up a little bit, uh, select these two points or all four, create a phase, create a phase, create a phase, create a phase with F as a shortcut. And while it's still a bit rough, it's now a better topology. And to smooth things up a little bit in the end, let's just select the entire region here. Uh, I hold control and that gives me a nice selection all around. So I'll select the ring all around this region and I'll select this entire ring. And then I go to actually include these maybe. No, let's not. Right, and then I go to uh, control E, um, no, uh, select, select uh, loops, select loop inner region. And then I go here to the smooth, smooth tool and just drag on this handle a little bit. You now you can experiment here a little bit and we just smooth these parts up. Um, finally, let's just select this region here. Uh, we can bring it down a little bit. We can smooth it up a little bit still. Then go back to the default selection tool. And I think we can call this region fine for now. Uh, it will need a lot of polish and detailing, but yeah. It is the basic structure and all the points that we need are in place. So we're good to go for, for now. Yeah, feel free to do some additional adjustments here and there to, you know, hit the silhouette better. That's not my primary concern at the moment. All right, this video is getting long. <laughs> I hope you learned quite a bit. <clears throat> uh, yeah, by the way, if, if you can't see the silhouette because this background image is in the way, just go to the side view, select it, and even if you can't see it, just move it to the back, like two units. You can do the same thing with this image, just move it to the back. Uh, if you want to see them quickly, see what I did. I did something like this. That makes it easier uh, to work with. Yeah, here we go. Uh, it's starting already to look like a character. <laughs> I hope you're doing good, like following along. Uh, leave your questions and answer each other's questions if you want in the comments down below. And otherwise, I'll be back very soon with the next part in this tutorial series. See you soon. Mm -hmm.